Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about wabi-sabi and embracing imperfection. Have you ever noticed an increasing drive for perfection in yourself? Have you ever balked at the two perfect things around you? What I think about sometimes is music. Some artists today are more and more seeking the old analog sound to the perfected digital sounds. Or even think of a live concert performance that you have enjoyed, and you may have enjoyed that performance better than the studio version. The world of tech has nudged us closer and closer to perfection in many ways, But are we helping ourselves by striving for perfection? What does this do to us? Perhaps much of the lack of acceptance and tolerance and the increasing anxiety we see around us is due to this drive for perfection and the negative side of such a pursuit, leaving us to feel not good enough and never quite complete. Maybe we could look at imperfection instead as being an improvement or an unfolding and evolving, and that we are learning from the journey. It might be a relief to not be perfect or be striving for such an impossible goal. How much more breathing room we could all have if we were letting go of perfection and seeking more consistency or seeking more to keep going, to do our best, to have good enough, right? You know, our brains change by what we think about and what we focus on, where we put our focus changes how our brain is. So use this to your advantage. I'm thinking about things like not stressing over perfection, but maybe you could flip that very same coin over and be grateful for what you were able to accomplish. Now, I don't believe that this will lead us to mediocrity. I believe that this will take a lot of pressure off of people and let them actually be good at what they're good at versus being stuck in perfectionistic thinking and never really moving forward. Traditional Japanese aesthetics suggests wabi-sabi is the view or thought of finding beauty in every aspect of imperfection in nature. It is about the aesthetic of things in existence that is imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete. Author Beth Kempton wrote a lovely book entitled Wabi Sabi, A Japanese Wisdom for a Perfect, Imperfect Life. This is a beautiful little book which embraces imperfection with grace and gratitude. It's an excellent antidote to an anxious life. And I believe that life would be less anxious if we could spend some time finding beauty in the imperfect. What a gift we would give to ourselves and those around us if we could accept the challenge of living with imperfection versus feeling the need or the drive to fix and change people and things in our lives. Let that settle in a little bit, because those of us who have been on the anxious journey or live with that level of worry, maybe codependency, people pleasing, any of these things cause us to want to change people, places, and things around us. And what a relief it would be to lose that drive, to have to change things in our lives. Maybe we could have more tolerance with people in our lives. I have some great ideas to talk about further, but I want to thank today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. Our partner, Athletic Greens, has a product that I enjoy using every day. 
I started using AG1 because I don't wake up hungry and don't eat until later. I wanted to have something that's good for me and tastes great, but it's not really a meal. And AG1 totally fits the bill. So what is this stuff, right? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All that in a delicious, easy-to-mix morning drink that tastes like pineapple to me. AG1 is recommended by professional athletes and trusted health experts. It's a small micro habit with huge benefits and an easy way to self-care for yourself every day. Now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash ACP. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash ACP to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So I have some ideas that I'd like you to ponder and maybe give a try to see if you can't find yourself embracing imperfection a little bit more and letting your nervous system just relax just a little bit. So number one, give yourself permission to be yourself, right? Just be yourself. It's okay. Next, I want you to strive to do your best, but not to the point of causing ill health or disease. And that includes keeping yourself on your to-do list. Taking care of yourself needs to be on your to-do list. Next, find your limits by keeping track of what pushes you over the edge. We all have our limits where we're trying to push and get further and further, and then we hit our edge. Find your limits. Keep track of what that is and stay away from that edge. Build into your life boundaries that respect your mental and physical edges. So again, this is going right along the same lines. Once you have identified what those edges are, build boundaries. This doesn't mean we don't strive to do more, be more, but we know that going over the edge and going into a panic attack or an anxiety wormhole is not helping anyone. It really doesn't. You can't get sick enough to help someone. It doesn't work that way. You have to take care of yourself first. So find those edges and build your boundaries that respect them. Remember, we are not machines, but we are ever evolving, growing and learning beings. And so with that knowledge, we can remember that there is no real perfection. It's always changing because we're always evolving. We're growing and learning. There is no end point. So actually, this brings to mind that I was talking to one of the trainers at the at the gym I go to, and I had been away traveling. And then when I came back, so it seemed like I had been gone for a while. And then it was kind of hard to get back into the routine again. And I said to him, oh my goodness, I'm having trouble getting back on track again. Do you have any any pointers or suggestions? And he said to me, well, don't push yourself too hard. He says, because we do this for the rest of our lives. So it made total sense to me. Like, it wasn't like I had to like make up for lost time or I had to meet some perfect goal. It was like, oh no, I'm just taking care of my body by going to the gym, and I'll just do that forever. It's not like you you just go for three weeks or three years and you're done. So that took a lot of pressure off. It was like, yep, just get back into that routine again. Just do what was working before. Start slow, build back up again, because we're never done. (laughs) It took a lot of pressure off. So let's give ourselves some messages that 
we can live with this imperfection, not only like live with it, like we have to do it, but embrace it. Let's do wabi-sabi. Let's see the beauty in every aspect of imperfection in nature and not try to change everything. But let's embrace it and give ourselves a break and let's see where that can take us. But some of it can be changed by how we talk to ourselves. And this is where often people can get helped with affirmations. You can either say affirmations to yourself in your mind. You can say them out loud. You can write them in your journal. You can put them on sticky notes on your mirror. And I know people that do this. So find ways that you can get some of this good, healthy self-talk going on. Because again, our brains change by what we think about and what we focus on. So why not use that to your advantage? So here are a few affirmations you might want to put into play for yourself. My worth isn't based on my achievements. My worth isn't based on my achievements. My health and well-being are more important than my accomplishments. My health and well-being are more important than my accomplishments. I give myself grace when I make a mistake. I give myself grace when I make a mistake. Mistakes and imperfections are growth opportunities. Mistakes and imperfections Our growth opportunities. I am enough. I am enough. I release the need for approval from others. I release the need for approval from others. My goal is wisdom, not perfection. My goal is wisdom, not perfection. Let's let those settle in a little bit. Maybe you found some in there that really made a difference to you, that you said, ah, I could use a little of that. Maybe you could jot it down in your journal. Maybe you could put it on a sticky note on your mirror and say it to yourself. Maybe you could just say it at the end of your meditation time when you are in that beautiful, receptive, calm place. It's very important that we remember these things. Our worth is not based on our achievements. Nope. (laughs) There may be a whole big world out there trying to tell you that, But I think when you step back and think about it, you don't judge other people along those lines often. You know many people who have not achieved the highest of high, and you still love and respect them. This is not about achievement. So don't consider your worth based on your achievements. You are bigger than that. You may achieve great things, and we all There is an inner human drive to do those things, to achieve, to work, to make things better, to help. Yes, but not at the expense of our own wellness, which is where things have seemed to go off the rails. With your health and well-being ending up being playing second fiddle to your accomplishments, people work themselves to the bone And they have forgotten to take care of themselves, to eat right, to take 10 minutes a day to meditate, 10 minutes to take care of yourself, to make a nice dinner that is filled with foods that feed you physically, that will keep your body in better health. And when we make a mistake, 
we want to make sure that we are kind to ourselves. We have some compassion as we would for another. A lot of this comes back to letting ourselves treat ourselves as well as we treat other people, right? When someone else makes a mistake, we often give them grace. We often understand we would not be as hard on them as we are on ourselves. Believe me, I am preaching to myself here because I can fall into all of these things. There's so many times in life we need to be reminded to see our mistakes and imperfections as growth opportunities where we can actually learn something that will propel us even further. But if we were to just grind and grind and grind to make something perfect, we never would have seen the growth opportunity and we never would have made the next leap. It's so important to take yourself off the hook and let life be messy. It's okay. And you are enough. I'm enough. You're enough. We don't have to prove anything. We want to do our best, and you will want to do your best, especially when you are no longer feeling anxious and ground down from trying to be perfect. We don't need approval from others. It's nice when it comes. It's awesome when somebody says something nice about what you're doing or a project that you worked on. It's wonderful, but it's gravy. You do not need approval from others. Approve of yourself. Approve of how well you are taking care of yourself and your life and your loved ones and go from there. And finally, we want to really be striving for a life of wisdom and not perfection. There is no perfection. It's inattainable. So when we can drop that, just like the trainer saying to me, well, we do this forever. Like, we're just not doing something for the short term. This is a long-term thing. So do it and enjoy it. Live your life in a way that you can enjoy, in a way that you can be self-compassionate, in a way that you can see the beauty in every aspect of imperfection in nature. I'm always so happy to be here with you guys. I hope that the rest of your day is just precious, awesome, and that you can feel the beauty around you instead of just looking for the next thing to do. I'll see you in a few days. That's it for today's episode. And before I read today's quote, I want to remind you that if you want more than what's offered here and more personal guidance, you might be ready for our group coaching membership program. It's a deeper dive into what you learn here on these episodes. Each month, you'll receive two anxiety clearing skill sheets sent in email. You'll also receive two live group coaching calls, which are recorded in case you can't attend. Those will help guide you through your challenges. And there's also a secret Facebook group for coach and community support every day, all month long. So if you're ready for more, go to anxietycoachespodcast.com slash group dash coaching and join today. I'd love to see you in the group. And now for today's quote. Have no fear of perfection. You'll never reach it. And that's from Salvador Dali. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at theanxietycoachespodcast.com.